Ja. Was that a hon? With that golf, I wouldn't be here. You know, I won 72 tournaments on the LPGA, over 90 worldwide wins. But I always tell my kids on my Grand Slam of life. 90 degrees out. <laughs> you know, I can look back at my career and I'm super proud of everything I've achieved and it was great. But, you know, I realized in the very end that to make me, you know, more of a complete person wasn't going to be golf wins. It wasn't going to be events. It wasn't going to be trophies. It was something bigger. And yeah, I'm in there in my life, really. Oh, horseback riding. See, mommy rode horses too, Ava. This was one of my first mics. <laughs> he was a terrible golfer. I wouldn't want to have it any other way. We have fun together. We do a lot of, you know, cool things. We're lucky, the memories we have. So I've been lucky that uh, these three have filled my life with that. This has become the tradition we have. The first few weeks in June, we come here, we spend time with, you know, my parents and just catch up on the culture, the food and the traditions. To me, I think the family unit is so important. I think it's important from my end to be able to share that, you know, this is where I grew up, you know, these are my roots. I grew up in a place called Bro, um, Upplandsbro, which is a little district outside Stockholm. Uh, I mean, it was a quiet town, you know, just kind of the locals. This is not really a touristy place. Uh, we've got childhood friends are here. So coming back here brings uh, back some great memories. It's a lake here. I remember we went, used to park and go s swimming back there. Some things still look the way it used to look, and some things are maybe a little more modern. This actually is a red bus right here. Five, five, five. That's the one I used to go to school with. The bus literally stopped right here, so almost door to door, which is really nice. I went to elementary school here, and middle school and high school, and it's really where I started to play golf. And you know, wherever you have friends and memories, it's kind of where you, you know, your roots begin. And you know, at the beginning of my life, everything started literally here. So here we are. This is where I went to high school, Ekhammar School. And I have not been back here, I wouldn't say 40 years, but it's close, maybe 38. It's a little weird coming back. <laughs> Annika was calm, nice, and free. She was, a, what I think, perfect child in any ways. She was very easy to, to take care of and raise up. She was very shy, but I had no problem with her as a teenage. I mean, I was a you know, fairly good student. I was a quiet student, um, shy by nature. Really didn't raised my hand to participate a lot. I think I was just shy in front of all classmates. But I think I liked that building more, which is next to the school, which is a tennis building. That's where I took all my tennis lessons. Um, I think I have more memories from that than from the school area. I guess that says a lot. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Whatever we did, she was good in any sport. I mean, she played soccer and she played it in the first team at her age. And she played badminton was good. And you know, she played tennis too. Welcome in. <laughs> Annika yeah. started to play tennis. And after a while, they started to be good in, in, in tennis. I think we say have fun. That's what very important at that age. We just wish them good luck, every, whatever they did. You can see they've had some big stars around here. That, this I remember a lot. Wow. So cool to see this again. Spent a lot of time here. My parents have been very supportive and loving and they would give me the resources and they would introduce us to whatever sport it was or take us to an event or take us to a coach and just kind of like supportive in a in a good way where 
it was up to us if we wanted to pursue the sport, if we wanted to get anywhere, it was up to us to put in the time. And they were like, you pick and then we'll, we'll support you either way. You know, it's been a while. We gotta do a few more, I gotta get the hang of it. This is why I didn't do good in tennis, my backhand. Uh-oh. She didn't like to lose. But it was a good sign, I think. I told Annika, the day you beat me in tennis, I will stop smoking. And it didn't take a long time, she beat me. So I told her that was a stupid thing. We changed sport. Why didn't you tell me 30 years ago? Maybe you did. <laughs> uh, the day you beat me in golf, I would stop smoking. It didn't take long either to so beat me. I said, then I stopped smoking. But that was a very good decision. Here is Annika's first golf clubs. Huh. Uh. Five clubs. <laughs> I only played golf once a week during the weekend. And uh, I didn't play with the girls until Annika was 12 years. It wasn't until the age of 12 that I really thought, well, maybe I should give this a try. I thought golf was a little slow and I wanted a little bit more, I don't know, action or whatever. I just, I thought it was for old people. And um, it's just, I think, a sequence of events that made me just start thinking about playing the game of golf. When we decided to build the course in Brew, I came down every morning to the, give directions to the crew. And both in the morning and both in the end of the day, there were two little girls uh, standing, hitting balls back and forth. We didn't know what they were doing. It was interesting to see how keen they were. And uh, that became Annika and Charlotta. They were very much together. They did all the things together. The, those two was on, almost the only girls at the golf club. This field that I'm looking at was just, it was just grass. And I remember my sister and I, we would have these shag bags and we would hit back and forth all day long, put up different targets and just hit back and forth with our own little shag bag. And now that's a nice practice area. We kind of cherish those moments right now. And as we had a lot of fun, both of I, my sister and I, we really spent a lot of time there growing up. Off school, you would take the bike to the golf course and, and stay there until dinner time, basically, pretty much every day. Every summer here from sunrise to sunset and so yeah this is my my place. The juniors including Annika and Charlotta spent at least an hour every day in the lakes of the course finding balls. They, they handed them out one to everyone, one here and one there all the way around. Yeah we would have goggles or swim goggles um, but you know, you're not going to find something poisonous or anything like that. It's just more the thought of going in, I guess. But you get used to it. And when you don't have the money to have golf balls, then it's like you don't have a choice. I'm still quite shy by nature, but growing up in school and just didn't want to raise my hand in class because I thought that if I say the wrong thing, everybody would giggle. And the same thing happens in golf. So, you know, in Sweden, when you play a junior event and and you do well, they want you to you know, give some remarks after your competition. Um, so I would miss a few shots uh, on purpose towards the end because I knew that I was doing well and I didn't wanna, I figured if I finished second or third, I would still get a prize, but I didn't have to say anything, and, which is what happened several times. So Tom said in, to the organizer of the tournament, said, let's the first three have, keep a speech, you know. Then she decided if I have to, speak as a thought, I could easily win that, and I had to speak anyhow. It was a nice thing to do. <laughs> I remember telling them, well, I didn't win. They said, we know, but we'd like to hear from you. And, and I was, you know, 
terrified. I was like, oh, there goes my plan. <laughs> I was happy now I could win golf tournament because that's really what I worked so hard for. But yeah, it was, it was destructive, obviously, but, um, but I still got to play and enjoy the game. But um, I'm glad that they let me overcome that fear. They actually made this first part a rosen garden. You can see it here, but they call it Annika's rose flower bed. So, kind of cool. I remember I was working for the Swedish Federation and there was 10 girls and uh, Annika was probably one of the worst of the 10 girls. <laughs> this, uh, this is called the Sorenstam Room or the Sorenstam Corner, which is literally to document, you know, my story, my sister's story, and how we played together, how we grew up here, and kind of the experiences throughout the, the years. She was a hard worker, and, and she was really stubborn. She was very organized with everything she was doing. That's why I start to understand she was actually really good. Golf is a hard sport. <laughs> It's super hard. It fascinated me. I loved the challenge, how difficult it would be. So I, I think I just kept trying to get a little better. Yes, yeah, so I played a tournament in uh, Japan. Um, the, the coach for University of Arizona was there. And that's how I got recruited. She graduated from high school. She worked one year here for PGA Sweden. And then after that, she moved over to US. I never thought at that time she was going to be a professional golfer. My mom took me to the airport and I had two suitcases and a golf bag and I never forget she told me, it's, she said, Annika, just remember it's equally as far back as it is going, which means if I can go there, I can come back any time and that's how I interpret it. And when I went to, to University of Arizona, starting to win some college events and, and that's when I realized that maybe this is what I want to do full time. And, um, so I left after two years. We discussed it and she said, I have no idea to, to study anymore, but I, I want to play professional golf. I supported her. So that's a good idea. You can study later if you fail. I was becoming a better player and that maybe there was some future there. To be good at something, you you know, you, there's sacrifices because, you know, those things when you have to prioritize, so to speak, work over fun, right? And so I would say that I've done that all my life. She just had a, an ability to raise her level. Her focus, her training, I think was very, very impressive and that's what made her successful. It was just how driven I am and how much I push myself and I mean, there's, really no stopping. It was just golf was number one and and um, it was whatever it took, I was going to get there. This is it. Annika tapped in for a par at 278 in a one-stroke lead with Meg Mallon playing immediately behind her. The U.S. Open in 1995. I came from nowhere, so to speak, and climbed up the leaderboard and then I ended up winning. And I think that that tournament just kick-started my career in so many ways. I mean, confidence, and I think that that one is probably the one that made, you know, made such a difference. The 1995 Women's Open Championship had been decided. Annika Sorenstein had won. You know, you joined the tour, and all of a sudden, you just won out of many, many, and there, many of them have done well, and because uh, you never know. I mean, there's a uh, lots of talent. They're going out there and not win, and then they stop playing, but. Um, I got my win my second year, and and then it just kept on coming. <laughs> when I'm going out and watch her play, often I admire her like a, like a player. Oh, she's good. She's good. And, it's like, and then I kind of think, oh, she's my daughter. She's <laughs> then I got proud, you know. She's my daughter. She's doing this well, so well. Mm -hmm. I think about it every day. She's still the leading money winner, right? All time. And how many years has she been retired? And look at the purses. They're bigger and bigger every year, and still she's number one. The way she planned her training up to that majors, I mean, I can't even point how many on one, two, my two hands, that, that many she's won. Kind of getting goosebumps when you say it. And uh, 
I try to live up to the name and the reputation she had created. Um, so it makes me proud that I'm, I'm part of that legacy as well because of my name. Been with her through so much of this uh, great run of golf. There she goes. Uh, I'm so happy for her. Everything had happens and things. And for me, she's the greatest golfer I ever been working with. Um, actually, I would say she's probably the best women player ever. Up on the board, a final farewell and thank you. I knew that one day my career would be over. It was just when and how. You know, I realized in the very end that I had reached my full potential. I mean, there was nothing really else that I could do to push myself to, to do more. And I think at the end of my career, I realized that I just can't get up every morning and get fired up about something that I'm not really fired up about. This doesn't excite me anymore, and I'd want to do other things. And that's when I realized it was time to um, step away. Bad grip. Wait. I was, like, going to hit it short, and then I hit it far, and then it was, like, not. I agree. Oh, good shot. I'm, I'm the luckiest guy in the world. I, I really am. I, I choke up. <laughs> I love how she always puts other people before herself. It's, and she's one of the nicest people that I know. Yeah, very yeah, lucky. Yeah, she's guy. a great mom. Very lucky to have her. Yeah. It all starts with the family. There's always time for the kids, and um, and I would say most things revolve around them now. Um, families, everything. Do you remember when we had pizza in Gothenburg and you had to be my interpreter? Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. Because you had no idea what I could have said about you. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. You know, life is really fulfilling in that sense, and. I play for a bigger purpose, I live for a bigger purpose, and I cherish it with, you know, all my heart and every, every little aspect of life. Do you have milk in my tea? Yeah. Which one? Oh, I like more. I'm most proud what a wonderful daughter she is. How she takes care of us in many ways, how she loves us and, and so. That's the most important for me. Oh, that's not my fault. <laughs> it was five girls. Were yeah, it was, like I'll that. never forget because she was the captain, so she has to organize everything and she had to give a winning speech. And I think we won like 11 to 1. And in the speech, she was, Thank you so much for a thrilling match. <laughs> <laughs> you remember? I have been but practicing. Yeah, you have know, been I practicing. I the course, tried to speak, you know, loud and, and everything and proud and stuff. And then they were just left, left. They didn't stay in the forest. <laughs> She's like, let's stop this. I don't want to hear anymore. <laughs> I think with our kids, they're very humble, uh, like their mom. They see the hard work. They see the dedication. And, um, and they're the same way. My dad's always like, you know, your mom is like one of the best female golfers ever. I was like, well, that's cool. I would say I didn't really know that for a while. To me, it was just my mom played golf here and there. I'm proud because everyone's always just like, oh, there's Annika, let's go. Let's go, Annika. And then it's, it's nice being able to be part of it. She's just special. She's the best mom you could ever ask for. She's the best wife, the best friend. She's just a great person. And families, it's everything. That's all that matters to us. So I'm proud of everything she does, but she do a good thing there she, as an ambassador for women's golf. Not only LPGA, but for youngsters, kids, too, young girls. You know, there's a chapter for all of us in our lives where we do give back to, you know, for causes that matter. 
And this is one, something that's close to me because I know what it's like to be there and I want to be able to do it as a thank you. Uh, many of you know why we do these events, but if you don't know why we do these events, is other than having fun, we want to get back to the game of golf. I want to say thank you. I want to inspire the next generation of young girls coming up. And uh, the goal on our team is to provide a great playing opportunity. And we want you to follow your dreams. Because guess what? I'm living my dream. Her career for us is kind of like what Tiger has done for the men. I mean, I think that she is the main reason why we are as big as we are in the golfing world. I mean, we are a very small country from a very cold country. The whole kind of, if she can do it, I can do it, kind of grew from her. The Scandinavian Mixed event just taken place for the third year in, in Sweden. I mean, that was the pioneer tournament. That is a legacy that you affect and embrace a lot of people, engage a lot of people in the sport. So that means a lot. We always keep learning lessons, but I want you to understand that it's okay to learn and figure figure things out. She's our biggest star, you know. I think she's equally big in, in America as Europe, and everybody knows she's Swedish, so uh, she obviously means a lot. Mine was almost, you know, seven to seven. You know, it's like, first of all, I enjoy doing it, but to get better and to be good at something, you just gotta keep on doing it. It's not a single golfer doesn't know who she is, and um, especially, I mean, putting Sweden on the map, and I think she's a huge inspiration to a lot of the generations that came after her, like mine, and I hope that I can inspire, just like Annika inspired me when I was a kid, um, playing in her Annika Invitational events, so um, I think we have a lot to thank her for that. And thank you very much. Tack så mycket. Like these girls were, you know, not even born when she stepped away from golf. And so it's nice now through our junior events, we have over 600 girls a year from 60 plus countries play our tournaments every year, which I think is a testament to her legacy. Okay, just stay down. Don't come through too much. Just stay down there like you showed me. The club will do the work. The more we can push it, the more we can make people think that, you know, girls golf is pretty good too. And I feel like that's a privilege, really. I never really thought that that would be, you know, my legacy. Um, thinking how shy and how reserved I can be and have been for so long. And um, I mean, I just played because I enjoyed the game and the competition. And then I think things just started to evolve a lot more. Now oh, that was beautiful. We all want to be somewhat like her. Um, I think that helps everyone to know that you can dream big and you can you can go for it. Like you don't have to be like everyone else. She's the goat of the female uh, golfers. I think definitely greatest of all time for sure. I, I don't think there's any comparison. To watch another DP World Tour video, click here, and to subscribe, click here.